Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Myra with Farm Fresh Designs 59. Right now you're watching me with a Iron Orchids design stamp and it's called Antiquities. When you first get one of those stamps, you need to take a light grit sandpaper and run it over the stamps, both up and down and sideways, and it helps the stamps do better. It kind of puts some teeth on the stamp so that the ink grips better, and it makes a good stamp. So right here are, is a little muslin bag, and I put some little piece of aluminum foil in between the front and the back so that the ink would not bleed through. And I'm using stays on ink. So I put the stamp on a thin mount, which is just a very thin piece of plastic that has lines on it. And I lay it down, hold it with one hand and work your fingers around with the other. You wanna make sure that you go and touch all parts of it and then pull it up very slowly. That's just so that it um, won't move around and have mess up the design. So on the next muslin bag, I'm using the Iron Orchid Design Bella stamp. Now, this is a stamp that I have used before, so I do not need to use sandpaper on the back of it. Once I pull it up and put it on the thin mount, it's ready to go. You only have to sand it one time. So this is my second muslin bag. Now, as you're watching me stamp this on the muslin bag, I wanted to talk about the stamps. I went to Hobby Lobby and I found some plastic sleeves that I could put my stamps in. I found it in the scrapbooking section. And I, each, one, each one of my stamps goes into one of those clear um, containers, or not containers, but a sleeve. And then when you take it out of the package, I use the cardboard and I actually tape it onto the front of that sleeve so that, and they're all in like a little um, crate. And so that way, when I'm looking for a stamp, I can easily find what I'm looking for. So once again, hold it down with one hand and then work your fingers around and pull it up. Just pull it straight up. And once you stamp it, you can go ahead and pull that aluminum foil out. Now, when I use my clear stamps, I just take a baby wipe and wipe off the ink before I put it back onto the plastic that it comes on. Now, this next stamp is from Redesign with Prima, and I have a friend, and her name is Lisa with Our Shabby Cottage. And if you are not subscribed to her channel, make sure you go out and look out look up her channel and watch her videos she is just a sweet dear friend of mine and she uses this stamp a lot and it's called i see paris now i put it on the thin mount and you're going to watch me make a mess up so i've got my muslin bag ready this one i just have some parchment paper in so you may have noticed that stamp kind of moved off for a second. I should have learned my lesson at that point, but I did not. So I lay it down and I put my stays on ink, get it all stamped up and getting ready to flip it over and stamp my muslin bag and watch my stamp. Yep, it falls right on the muslin bag, messes it up. So what do I do? I put that one to the side, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. And I pull out another muslin bag. You can find these muslin bags on, bags on Amazon or you can find them in little packs at Hobby Lobby. So I have got smart this time. This one doesn't stick to the thin mount really good. So I'm not mounting it to the thin mount. I'm just gonna put the ink on it just right there and then and just hold it and do it that way. And when I do that, I don't mess up. And I've also gone on to Pinterest and it says that when you have a stamp that will not hold onto plastic that you can put alcohol on the back. So I need to try that. Either that or make myself a note the next time I use this to not put it on the thin mount and just hold it with my hand. 
and there's my third muslin bag. So now um, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to decorate your own tissue paper. So I bought some white tissue paper at the Dollar Tree and I'm using the Iron Orchid Design Kind Disregard Stamp with my Black Stays On ink. And I'm going to flip it over and lay it straight down on the tissue paper. Move my hand around. This one is so big and heavy, I do not feel like it's going to move once I lay it down. But you also still want to be really careful, and when you pull it up, make sure you don't wiggle the stamp. And now you have some tissue paper that's different than what you're going to see at Hobby Lobby to use to tuck inside your muslin bags like you can put a little gift card in it. So this muslin bag that had the Bella stamp, I wanted to make it a little bit fancier. So this is just a little paper um, flower that I bought in a packet at Hobby Lobby. And I used tight bond glue. And I'm gonna glue it in the middle of that stamped medallion. Now I use tight bond glue a lot. And um, it's, it's a pretty heavy duty stamp. And if I put it on my fingers, then I have that glue that dries on my fingers. And so I just try to squirt some out on like a little piece of parchment paper and I use a popsicle stick. And then I realize I better put something between those two layers to make sure that that glue doesn't glue together the front and or the top and the bottom of the muslin bag. And I'm glad I did because when the glue was dry and I pulled that paper out, I realized that it was kind of sticking a little bit, so I'm glad I did. Now, this is a metal switch plate. I was at the thrift shop one day, and I found a bag, and I found a lot of these heavy, heavy metal switch plates. And I don't remember how many was in it, but the bag was only $7 for a bag of them. So... Um, I went on and bought all of them that came in the bag. I was pretty excited. I knew exactly what I was going to do. Now, when I got it home, it was more kind of a antique brass looking color. So I took all of them outside and I spray painted them white with Rust-Oleum linen white spray paint. But I do just, just a small dusting of paint because it acts as a primer. But um, I didn't want to use all of the spray paint, so I wait until it dried, and I brought it in, and I'm using my Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint in the can, because it goes a lot further. And I put on the paint pretty heavy, because I don't want to put a second coat on it, and I want to make sure that I get it covered, because around the edges of the switch plate, there's a little bit of beaded detail, so I'm kind of pushing the paint into that. And then I use a heat, dry, heat, heat gun to dry it. And make, I make sure that I paint the sides of it because even though it's not something you're really going to be looking for particularly, but I want to make sure that all parts of it are painted the same because after all, it's going to be a gift. I will tell you that I do not paint the back of that plate because it's going to be up against the wall. So that's not necessary. But that's not really all I'm going to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it fancy. So this is an Iron Orchid Design silicone mold and it's called Classic Elements. And I thought I had videotaped this, but... Unfortunately, I did not. I did not hit the, pre the, the video button. So um, this is made with amazing casting resin. And it's a resin that you mix up. There's two different parts and it dries in 10 minutes. And it is solid after that. And it comes out white. And then the, the, the resin comes out white. It dries in about 10 minutes. And then um, I've already painted at this point. I, did, I just painted it white because I'm going to do something else to it. But because it's hanging off the edge of the switch plate, 
I use just some little bottles of paint to hold it down onto the switch plate and then I let it dry overnight. And once it's dry, it is not moving. Now, this is an, my, new, my next project, and it's a thin piece of plywood. It's just a real small piece, and it's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. It will just be a little sign or a little shelf sitter um, that I'm painting with the Dixie Belle color paint blue. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's spelled H-A-I-N-T blue, and it's a powder blue and I think it's my new favorite color. But I am going to paint the front and the back of the sign because I like the back of it to look as pretty as I do the front. And I, when I'm in a pinch and I'm trying to get something finished, I do use a heat gun on the lowest settings to dry the paint. Now this is a stamp I found on Amazon, and I can't find... I can't find it right now, and I've looked for it. Um, and it's just, it's a clear stamp. And the clear stamps that you find on Amazon are usually very inexpensive. But I'm going to, the, the blue little sign is dry. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my stays on ink on it. And put this on my blue sign. And then I'm still not finished. I'm going to do one more thing to make it pretty. And just remember, some of the pieces on this stamp are really thin. So make sure that you don't push on them too much because it can make that stamp move a little bit if you put too much pressure on it. So this is a stamp. I'm, I'm sorry. This is a transfer that I found on Amazon and it's redesign with Prima and the name of the transfer is called Garden Marvels and it's got a lot of different designs on it but this one is just a small birdhouse. Um, I like birdhouses a lot and so does my mom and so um, what you do is you peel off the transfer off of the back of the um, white it's like white paper um, but it's got a coating to it. So you peel that off and the transfer is on the back of that clear plastic. So you lay it down and then you're going to, I'm using a plastic scraper that I bought at the Dollar Tree to scrape it down, kind of run over that transfer. Now when you're putting your transfer down, if you've never used them, make sure that you push down on it pretty hard and then pull it up slowly. And as you're pulling it up, sometimes you'll notice that some of it did not transfer. So just lay that clear plastic back down and scrape it a little bit more. And also, I meant to tell you that I, you need to put clear coat on top of the paint and that helps it make the transfer go on better. Just make sure that not only is the paint dry, but the clear coat is dry before you do the transfer. Now the next sign that I'm doing, I painted it with a Dixie Belle buttercream. And this is another transfer that I found on Amazon. And I, I believe it may be my most favorite transfer I've ever used. In fact, I bought a couple more of them. And it's so beautiful. I love the colors and it has florals on it and it's got some script writing on it and it's just so pretty and so elegant looking. So I go ahead and put the transfer down and I realized when I do it that I didn't cut the transfer long enough, but that's okay. Transfers are wonderful like that. You don't have to cut it out a certain way. You can use bits and pieces here. And I actually have a little plastic container that I keep scraps of transfers in because you can use those scraps in different times depending on if you use a lot of transfers. Now you're gonna notice that I'm just having a hard time getting that plastic to pull up. And it's not because it's the plastic, it's because um, I don't keep fingernail, I don't keep my fingernails long because I always have so much paint on my hands. 
And so um, it's just hard to pull that one up for some reason. But it, it does not speak of the transfer. It speaks of my fingers that just can't grab a hold of that plastic and get up underneath it. So I'm just getting it all scraped down. Now, if you have a Cricut machine, it comes with one of those plastic scrapers. But the one that has the little pink top to it, that came from the Dollar Tree. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use that clear plastic. I didn't tell you this before. Rub it over the transfer that you just put down, and it's called burnishing it. And it just pushes that transfer into the wood just a little bit more. Because after you finish with the transfers, then you need to put a clear coat on it as well just to protect it. So see how it's got that extra design on it? And I'm just cutting a little bit more of the script and I'm gonna add it down to the bottom. I kinda eyeballed how much I needed. And I just kind of maneuver it into where it looks like it's in the right spot again. And then just use my plastic scraper to put that down, down at the bottom. And then once I pull that up, then I'm going to burnish that little small piece of transfer as well. Isn't that so pretty? I love the colors of the floral on that transfer. Even though it's still a small piece, I try really hard to be careful and not pull it up too fast. So those little signs will slip inside of those little muslin bags that you stamped. Now, I've already done one piece of that molding on the switch plate. I'm using Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel to Tobacco Road. That's the color. It's a brown gel. Now, it's going to be really important that before you use any kind of gel stain, whether it's Dixie Belle or Waverly's Antique Gel, make sure that you put a clear coat down first because if you don't and you don't like how much it's going down, you're going to have a hard time pulling it off. So if you put that clear coat on and then you use the dark gel, then you can wipe off what you want if you, don't, if you think you've done too much. And I'm just using a baby wipe. And now I want to, I don't want it to be a stark white and then the, the molding be gel stained. So now I'm just kind of going over the front of the switch plate. And remember, when you do this, um, if you're using a baby wipe, don't do too much. Just do a little bit and then wipe it off and then go to the next part because it, it does set up. So if you do like a very a large area, and then try to go back with the baby white. Maybe just a little bit harder to get it off. So just do little pieces at a time. It goes really fast. And I just think this makes the light switch plate so pretty. Now, when I made the molds of resin, I also made some little molds. Um, to put on my little signs. This one came from the Iron Orchid Designs Cameos. And this is just a little heart that's got a lot of detail. And I'm using my Type Bond Glue. It's already been painted. And I'm going to lay it on top of the sign. You can't see it. It's out of camera range um, right now. You'll be able to see it in just a minute. And then the little bird mold is going to go in the corner right there at the birdhouse. And I've already got those painted, and I believe I already have them with a little bit of stain on it. And there are three little gifts that you could make really easy for your mom, very inexpensive. Um, but 
As a mom, I always appreciated my kids giving me something that was handmade more than anything. Now, this is DIY Paint Company, and this is, it's called Golden Rule, and it's a gilding wax. And what I do is I dip my brush in it, and then I dry brush over the details. Because I don't want it to be all gold, I just want there to be just a little bit of gold that makes it shimmer when, you, when the light catches it. And it might not show up really good on the camera, but it's beautiful in person because this gilding wax, it's, it's not a really bold gold color. It's just a shimmery gold, but it's not real gaudy or anything. It just adds just a little bit of shimmer to it. And I really like it. I use it on a, a lot of things. And I'm also, going to put a little bit of that gilding wax on the heart mold that I have on one of my signs. And I'm also going to use the gilding wax on that little bird. Just adds a little bit of extra dimension to it. Now you're going to notice that I dip my paint into that gilding wax and I put just a little bit on it, but because I'm dry brushing it, I want to make sure that I pull off, if I pull up a big glob of it with my brush, which I, I don't usually do that, but I, that would keep me from having to put too much on that mold. Um, so it, I'm just kind of wiping off, dip it in real fast and then wipe off that little edge so that I'm doing the dry brushing. And those are the three gifts that you can make along with the muslin bags. So now just sit back and look at the three little sign, the, the two signs and the switch plate and the three muslin bags. Remember, you can also decorate your own tissue paper and just fancy it up however you want. And this is a very inexpensive way to give your mom something from the heart. So thank you so much for watching my video today. Make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave me a comment. Tell me which one is your favorite. I'm not really sure which one is my favorite. I do like them all. But thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.